database schema management is one of the areas of our industry that has not seen massive leaps in innovation. Essentially, schema management is dominated by a few projects that started when I was young. And as you can see, that's really long time ago. We might need new tools with new ideas. Today, we are going to see whether Atlas is one of those new tools with new ideas, whether Atlas can shake the status quo. A while ago, we got Liquibase with a declarative approach that relied on, wait for it, XML. Oh man, that was horrible. I honestly do not want ever again to go to XML. No one likes it. I don't like it. Let's not go there. Then came along Flyway with the linear database versioning system based on SQL. In the meantime, as Flyway appeared and started taking part of the market, Liquibase adopted YAML and JSON. So at least we do not need to deal with XML anymore. Now, as you can expect, both of those projects kept improving over time, but they're still bound by architecture defined a long, long, long time ago. Atlas, on the other hand, tries to change that with somewhat fresh, yet very similar approach. What makes it special is that it allows both the declarative and version definitions of schema with a few additional features like previews of the changes. Yet we've seen all that before, declarative or version schema changes and so on and so forth. What's new is that the declarative approach is based on HCL or HashiCorp configuration language, or as some people call it, human configuration language. That should make Terraform users feel right at home, especially since Atlas can run both as a standalone CLI, so anybody can use it independently of whether they're Terraform users or as a Terraform module. Now, that was enough of a talk. Let's go through a live demo and see uh, whether Atlas is a good choice for you. What are the pros? What are the cons? In general, whether you should use Atlas and we're going to see that through a hands-on experience. Now, I already have a small, a simple database, MySQL, actually not MySQL, Postgres database up and running. It already has some schema in it. Imagine that this is the database that I've been managing somehow with through some other means, maybe manually, maybe through Liquibase, and I want to see what does Atlas think of that database. So the first thing I'm going to do is inspect the schema of the database I already have. And I'm going to do that with Atlas schema inspect. Here's the URL to the database and send the output, the result of that inspection to schema HCL file. And there we go. You can see that it discovered that that database has one table called videos. It has certain ID and a certain title, actually certain columns. One of them is a private key and that's about it, right? So Atlas discovered what my database is and through inspection created the initial schema that I will need for that database. And that schema is in declarative or HCL format, right? So I do not need to figure out how to uh, catch up with Atlas. Atlas can just convert my existing database schema into its own HCL format. Now, let's say that I would like to modify schema of my database. I would like to add additional table called comments with a few fields and establish the relation between that table and the other one videos that already exists in my database. And I already prepared the file called schema comments HCL that has all that setup. I will show you the difference between the schema that was discovered by Atlas and the modified version that I have by executing diff between those two files. And you can see that the only change is 
in the table add me adding the table comments right the table uh, videos is still there in both files. So what I'm going to do is apply that uh, manifest uh, with Atlas by executing Atlas schema. I want to apply into the database in this URL and the file is schema comments RCL and I'm not yet ready to blindly commit to the potential changes but I'm going to execute dry run and see what will Atlas discover as the differences and what it would do to remedy, to uh, remove the drift between my declaration, which is the desired state, and what is the actual state, the database. And there we go. You can see that Atlas says, hey, if I should synchronize those two, uh, the result should be that I will create a table called uh, comments and uh, that table will have certain fields and so on and so forth. So it is showing me the SQL output of the command that it would execute to synchronize or to remove the drift between what I want and what it is. And now, assuming that I'm happy with those changes, that I'm happy with the idea of adding additional table, I can repeat almost the same command, Atlas schema apply, this is the URL, that's the file, but instead of running dry run, I will say, hey, uh, I'm confident with this, how to approve the changes, just go for it, do it. And the output is the same, except that this time it created a table for real and did not just show me what it would do, did not go through a dry run. Now let's see what would happen if I would continue working with my schema. Let's say that I changed my mind and that I realized that one of the columns in one of my tables uh, shouldn't be there, so I'm going to go back to the definition and I'm going to comment the field comment. That's kind of strange, right? I'm going to comment the comment, but that's just a coincidence. And then I will save the file and execute Atlas schema apply. That's the URL, that's the file. I don't want dry run. I do not want to commit automatically. Uh, let's see what will happen in this case. And in that case, uh, two things happen. First, I see in the output, what will Atlas execute? And in this case, it will alter the table comments by dropping the column comment. And unlike previous cases, it is asking me, hey, are you really, really, really sure that you want to proceed with this, right? And this is great for manual executions of schema changes or schema synchronization, uh, but not really for automation. You do not want to wait for response when you automate things, but if you're doing it manually, especially with, when testing, then this is a good option, right? And of course, I'm going to say, apply it, go for it and so on and so forth. From now on, I should be able to manage the scheme of my databases by modifying uh, Atlas manifests, which are in HCL. And for example, I can say, no, no, actually I changed my mind again. I actually do want that comment field to be present. So I'm going to uncomment it and then save it and then execute the Atlas command again. And by again, I mean, I'm getting bored with having to manually approve, so I'm going to say auto approve, and you can see that Atlas altered the table again, but this time it added the column comment. And that's it, which is a good thing. It is very simple to use. You just need to figure out to learn how uh, Atlas schema works. It is HCL, it is easy to figure it out. Atlas will figure out the details, how to deal depending on the database with this case or that case. You just need to write your specification and even ignore up to a level the specifics of uh, one database over the other. Now, that being said, some people do not like declarative approach to defining um, SQL changes or SQL schema. Uh, quite a few people, and I know them, uh, prefer versioned migrations. And version migrations means that you're essentially writing uh, schema deltas, right? You're writing SQL instead of HCL or whichever other declarative format you prefer. Now, personally, I prefer declarative format because that works so much better with the ecosystem and the tooling around it and so on and so forth. But you might not be in the same boat as me. And in that case, you should know that Atlas supports 
version migrations as well. You can just write your SQL uh, commands and uh, Atlas will make sure that uh, it will do the right thing in the right order and so on and so forth. And that's not where Atlas stops, right? It has quite a few other features that are very interesting. For example, it can show us the differences between two databases. So I could have production database and development database and I might have done some changes to the development database and I might want to see the differences between those two DBs and then choose what to do next. We should avoid that because that's usually the result of me doing some manual changes. But if you want to see the differences and generate the scripts to move from one database to another, there is that option. Atlas supports that. It also has input variables, which are very similar to how Terraform treats input variables. There is software as a service SaaS or managed version of uh, Atlas in Ariga Cloud, you should check it out. I love SAS. I like managed versions of everything. So if you're like me, then you might want to check that out. There is also, oh yeah, I didn't show the Terraform module. We can uh, add Atlas definitions as a Terraform module and combine them with everything else we do with Terraform, which is extremely, extremely interesting. And yeah, there is a Go library as well if you want to incorporate Atlas features into your Go applications. There are quite a few other things, but I think that we are running out of time. So let's talk about pros and cons of using Atlas. Atlas is a great tool for managing database schemas. There you go, I said it. It's really great. It works fantastically well, yet it might not be the best choice for everyone. So let's go through pros and cons and we're going to start with cons. Let's talk about the negative things of Atlas. And there are two that I can see. First one is that it has very weak Kubernetes story. If you want to run it in Kubernetes, we need to build a container image with the schema definitions and we need to push the image to a registry and then we need to define a Kubernetes job that will use that image and execute the Atlas command or we should attach it as init container to the deployment manifest of our application. Now, you might say, hey, that's not bad. That's how we've been doing things and that's correct. That's how we've been doing things in the past, but not today. For those wanting to manage database schemas in Kubernetes, I would expect a few custom resource definitions and the controller that would enable us to manage schemas as custom Kubernetes resources. This part is important for at least two reasons. First of all, I believe that we are moving towards the world where Kubernetes is not only something meant to run our applications, package desk, container images, but as a control plane to manage everything. Second, Atlas is not Kubernetes native, meaning that it cannot easily work with other tools in the ecosystem, like, for example, Argo CD, Caverno, Crossplane, and so on and so forth. Even when it can work, it's not as easy as it could be. All in all, if you prefer a Kubernetes native solution, I recommend Schema Hero. Bear in mind that Schema Hero is not even close to being feature rich as Atlas. Atlas is a better tool in general, especially if you compare feature by feature. For example, you will not be able to preview the changes, but I guess that's due to the nature of Kubernetes as can be observed in almost all other Kubernetes native tools. Nevertheless, Atlas is a much more powerful tool than Schema Hero, for example, yet it is not Kubernetes native, which brings it additional, some other negative things. And those things are mainly around the integration with the ecosystem. You need to make a choice. Do you want to aim towards Kubernetes ecosystem and combine whichever tool you choose with other tools in the system? Then Atlas might not be the best choice. On the other hand, if you're going more towards Terraform ecosystem, then this is the right choice. Now, the second negative thing is that HCL is a great declarative language. It might even be the best one out of there. Nevertheless, 
there are people who chose to move away from it into other solutions based on other languages, like Pulumi, for example, or Crossplane, my own. If you're one of those, you're likely not going to come back to HCL for the sake of using Atlas. Those are two negative points. Actually, they're not negative points. It's really all about whether you are leaning more towards one ecosystem or the other. Are you more CNCF or cloud native or Kubernetes native type of person, or you're more oriented towards the Terraform ecosystem, essentially. So those are not negative things necessarily, or not even cons, but simply comparing different approaches. Now, Atlas has quite a few very, very positive things and reasons why you should choose it. To begin with, it is extremely simple to use. It took me no time to figure it out and it's very effective. So it's a great and simple tool at the same time. Then we have HCL. Now, previously I said for some people HCL might be a negative thing, but for many people HCL is a great choice and using HCL is potentially really a great thing, right? Then we have the option to output the plan, uh, just as what Terraform does, both inside Terraform or when using Atlas and Standalone, which is absolutely amazing. We can choose between declarative and version approaches, so we do not have to uh, be relying on only one or the other. There is the Terraform provider, which is a great thing if you're using Terraform. Actually, if you're using Terraform, then um, this is almost certainly the best choice. It is very feature rich. It, uh, it didn't have like 10 or 15 years like other tools uh, to develop uh, the features, but given the short period of time of its existence, I think it's very, very feature rich. It does what it's supposed to do. And finally, there is both open source and managed or SaaS version, which is always, always, always great. All in all, if you prefer HCL and specifically, if you are a Terraform user, Atlas is a great choice. Don't think about it. Just adopt it right away. The syntax is the same. It's uh, HCL. It can work alone or as a Terraform module. It contains all the features you might need and it's very, very easy to use. The ability to use it as part of Terraform modules is especially interesting since we can combine the definition of database servers, databases themselves, and schemas into one Terraform project. That's very, very, very powerful, of course, if you are a Terraform user. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.